Look, here we go. Tom Tron, our next panelist, is a student activist and filmmaker and an outspoken advocate for immigration rights and immigration reform. While an undergraduate at UCLA, Ms. Tron directed a film project featuring testimonies from undocumented students, spotlighting the unique challenges, fears, and hopes of young scholars in the U.S. without citizenship status. Ms. Tron's film has been screened at immigration reform events across the country. In May 2007, Ms. Tron, herself an undocumented student, testified before the House Subcommittee on Immigration in support of the DREAM Act, federal legislation that would give children of undocumented immigrants the opportunity to obtain citizenship if they earn a high school diploma. Ms. Tron continued to vocally spotlight the importance of immigration reform in October 2007 when her own family was targeted for deportation. More recently, she has been outspoken about the challenges of undocumented immigrants and higher education funding. She is currently pursuing her doctorate at Brown University in American Civilization. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Um, well, first of all, thanks for coming and hanging out with us on a Friday night in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I'll just, uh, my name is Tam, like uh, Dr. Collins said earlier, and I'm here to talk about um, Undocumented Immigrant Youth, which is, um, I guess, the research I'll be focusing on um, in my future graduate studies. I just finished my first year, so I'm still trying to navigate um, how it's going to work out. But um, essentially, um, because of the fact that we haven't had any kind of um, comprehensive immigration reform in the last 20 years, um, as the population of undocumented um, immigrants is growing in this country, so has the population of undocumented um, children, um, just as their parents haven't had a path to legalization, so um, have their, you know, children, um, you know, continue to stay undocumented and, you know, they also continue to live in the shadows. So of about the 12 million undocumented immigrants that we have in this country, um, about 5% of them are um, minors and about uh, 1.6 to 1.8 million of them would qualify for something um, called the DREAM Act. It's a piece of legislation that was first introduced in 2002. And if it, would, if it passed, it would provide a path to legalization for um, undocumented youth who arrived in the U.S. before the age of 16, um, have lived in the U.S. for five continuous years, and either complete two years of college or serve two years in the military. But, um, you know, as this, this group of undocumented youth have, um, you know, grown up in the U.S., and like I said, their population is growing, um, this is something that policymakers have, have, you know, taken a note of. And because of that, um, about 11 states in the U.S. have passed in-state tuition laws so that undocumented youth who have grown up um, in these states and gone to high school in, in the states that they grew up in, um, you know, they can go on and, and go to college by paying in state tuition, but this doesn't mean that they qualify for any kind of financial aid or, or loans and even a lot of scholarships. Um, but because of that, it opened a pathway for a lot of undocumented youth to go into college. And as they went into college, um, you know, a lot of them, um, like myself, were really, you know, scared about, I don't know, like, you know, saying that you're undocumented and going to your professors or going to counselors and going to administrators saying that you have, you know, special needs that um, the school just wasn't ready to, to, to help with yet. And um, the thing is, as time went on, a lot of these undocumented students started um, meeting each other on campuses and they started organizing and making their schools aware of, of pretty much like their story and the plight that they have in, in wanting to reach that American dream of, of going to college and then eventually, you know, getting a job as a professor or whatever it is that they want to pursue. Um, so I started out in college as an activist because I wasn't documented and because I had met all, the, all of these really cool kids that are like now my friends. And, um, and also towards the end of college, I started getting into documentary film. So um, I think that's where a lot of my research will lead is, is how do we, as researchers, find ways to use new technologies and new media so that youth can represent themselves instead of us you know, telling their stories for them um, and letting them, you know, you know, tell their stories in, in their own words. Um, so I think something I just want to bring up really, really quickly that I'm really excited about is an event that's happening next week. 
It's um, the Tour to Dreams bike ride, and it's happening from UCLA to UC Berkeley. And if anyone's like interested um, in helping out, just talk to me afterwards. But essentially, um, undocumented students are going to be riding their bikes from UCLA um, to UC Berkeley, and they'll be stopping at different campuses and campgrounds on the way up. And it's also going to be a media event where they're going to try to um, bring awareness to the issue, and they're also riding to fundraise for next year's tuition. Because um, I said earlier, you know, undocumented students don't qualify for any kind of financial aid. But um, in terms of my role in this, as um, now a grad student and as someone who's interested in new media and documentary film, um, is that I'm going to be riding along with my camera and documenting as this trip goes on and uploading, you know, the events of the day on, on YouTube and whatnot. And um, I've also been doing some um, outreach to, to like documentary film companies. I don't know if you guys are, are um, familiar with Participant Films. Um, they have a, a take action part on their website called takepart.com. Um, this is the same production company that was involved with um, Seriana and um, Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth, I believe. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I'm always like thinking of ways in which um, I c we can bring like academic ideas into um, a public realm. And obviously the first thing I thought of was, was something like YouTube. It's free, you can put it on, anybody can access it. But, um, but yeah, I think that's just something we need to keep in mind is, is how to utilize all of these new like, networking tools and how to broaden academic research. And I think I'll stop there. Tom, how would you situate yourself in that? Where would you put yourself in a, this kind of a grassroots movement or an academic movement? You're sort of in the process of looking at both directions. anyone to be able to contribute to it as they 